Amen. Um, as I try and pick up where Swinon left off and also um, Rashad was going over in, si in the health portion with the higher power, um, as we're seeing that we're approaching this, this time that the Lord is bringing to our attention and he's using many different stories to illustrate the, the end of the world to us. You know, because all, all of the Bible is talking about this time. And, and, and the Lord, we have, we have to, we're at a point in this message, we have to recognize when God is sending us light. And as he sends us light, we're to walk in that light. And um, because when, when the confusion comes in, there's going to be many voices, Jesus says, and they're going to say, Lord, here's Christ, and there's Christ, and he says not to go for it. And, we, and, and they're all going to take their Bibles. And they're all going to say this and they're all going to say that. But, but God is going to have pe a people in the earth in whom he is communicating direct light to. And, they're, and we're going to have to acknowledge and recognize, recognize this light. Or are we going to be driven away or taken away by these many different voices that are going to say, Lo, here's Christ, there's Christ. Because we don't have a foundation ourselves. So um, because we don't, it's, it's good to come to the meetings, Ellen White says, and hear these things. But we have to go home and see whether those things be so. And make them our own. So my prayer is, is that we're not hearing these things and, and, and going away and not actually trying to understand these things. We must individually recognize when God is sending light. And the Bible says in Romans 10, um, um, how, shall they, how shall they call upon, how can they, um, how can they believe except they be a preacher? There must always be an instrument that's used to communicate this light. There must be someone that the Lord gives this light to that, 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 that opens it up, um, so, so to speak, to everyone. And all in the house will have light. You know, someone has to trim the lamp. You know, they, every, every single time someone has to trim the lamp. Every time. And, and we must recognize when the Lord is sending that light and walk in that light. We're all going to be tested in this way. Um, we're all going to be tested in this manner as this is what um, Swinon was bringing out. So this is what we want to look into a little bit. As we know, this 10 is the light before the exceeding bright light. And, and with every light, it's, 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 there's, always, there's principles associated to all of these things. We know we came to the fifth day of the fourth month, as he was saying earlier. There's things the Lord wanted us to understand, but once again, we don't understand, so he delays it. And every time the Lord delays it, 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 it gets worse the next time that, that, that it comes back around. Um, every time we have to go over the same ground again, it's the, it, the, the second time, third time. Yeah, the test is harder until we, pass, until we pass that test. So we're coming to this point where, you know, uh, where the Lord is going to test every single last one of us by, by what we know. And individually, we're going to have to stand on our own two feet based upon what we understand um, um, at the end of the day. So I hope that as I go through this note, um, we'll bring it out some more. Swinon was dealing with the blessings and the curses, but I'm a, and he came to the angle of um, this, this, this light, an exceeding bright light. This is the angle that I'm going to come from um, today. So we've been going, we've been looking over this, that Satan is cast out in the beginning, and he's cast out in the end, and, but it's really this whole period, the temple cleansing is three years. This whole thing, Satan is to be cast out. And we're going to read a quote where she says, we must be delivered from his power within before we deliver from his power without. So just like there's two births, two temple cleansing, there's two deliverance. And that's, but it's, it's, this, this, it's this, this period of time that the Lord is doing it. So once we get in this 10, as Swinon um, went over it, once we get in here, this is the beginning. The Lord is going to send this light, but it's new light, but it's not, it's not independent of the what? It's just an unfolding of something that was already there. Amen. He's just unfolding something he was already teaching us. And to unfold means to make it clearer. He's making it clearer so that we can see our way across and walk in that light. But if we turn from that light, declension is going to follow and we're, and we're going to fall. So how do we turn from the light? Yes, we reject it, but there must be things that there must be things there to make us turn from the light. I mean, do, do people just naturally just, does, do a boat naturally just turn on its own? It's either a captain or a what? Or the wind, right? Amen. There you go. It's influence. So we're, we're going to turn, that's what I wanted, that one. We're going to turn from the light by influences, right? The Bible says all the winds are going to blow once we get here. 
but there's one strong east wind that's going to blow. And that's the strongest influence that God is going to send so that we can see our way across and make it to the other side. And if we turn from that influence, then we become this swine that get possessed by Satan and we're going to go do violent things. You follow? Amen. So this is what, and, and all we have to do is look back at our past. Um, just go back to 2016, 2014, 9-11, and, and, you, and you find examples of people who were influenced to turn from this message. And that, as they turned from it, they did violently. You know, they, they became accusers of the brethren, and they began to feed on us and, and pick, apart certain, pick apart our characters and things of that nature. And if we turn from it, that's what we're going to become. We're going to pick apart each other's character. So the Lord wants us to be prepared for these things as we are about to engage it. So let's let's go. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take this for an illustration of this thought. Revelation 14. Mm -hmm. Every Adventist should know this particular chapter. And it says, And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty four thousand, having their father's name written in their foreheads. Um, jump down with me now. Um, because we know some of that. Jump down with me to the next bowl. It says, which were redeemed from the earth. Keep that in mind. So these were redeemed from the earth, right? Redeemed from the earth. And it says, these are they which were not defiled with woman, for they are what? Virgins. Uh, what comes to mind? Matthew 25, right? These virgins. So they come from this class of people. Amen. And let's, this is only illustrating to us their character. So all the virgins possess this character. All of them. They must possess this character. They're, this is just a special group of people the Lord is going to use. Um, so going on, it says, These are they which what? Follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were, these were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God. So I just want to come here. So at this time, Exceeding bright light, the Lord is going to have his first fruits. Amen? He's going to have his first fruits. But I, I want to point out, as Swinon was going up, this is the end. Right? So what, do we, what should we have back here? We should see some elements of these first fruits. This is what he was going over. Some people are going to discern the thing that's coming and give a message. They're going to discern what they see coming, and they're going to, they're going to preach amongst their brethren. Of, right. Amen. And the brethren are going to have to hear that word. Y'all follow? Because remember, it's a principle. When the, Lord, when the Lord sends light, he sends it to the first fruits. When God sends light in the earth, who does it go to first? Seventh-day Adventists, right? But Seventh-day Adventists have corrupted themselves. But within Seventh-day Adventists, there's a people who follow in the light, right? So, so they receive that light to communicate to who? Seventh-day Adventists. Amen? But in, within this movement, there are people who are going to see this light to communicate to who? To the ones we're fellowshipping with. Amen? And, to, and then it just goes right back up until it gets back to the top. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Amen? So I, that's why I said this is first fruit. At this end, you're going to have these people come out here that have passed through this experience, given a powerful message that, this, that the world has never, ever heard before. But they themselves must receive the same message likewise. In order, but as, they, as you receive it, you're giving it. And all I want to highlight is just a period of time. It's this period of time that begins here and it goes there. And, but go back to the, to the verses. Amen. So it says, they follow the Lamb. So I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible. Um, um, I'm going to stick to some really basic, I'm going to try to stick to some basic things. So let's look at this Lamb. You know, Miller's rule says every word must have its bearing. And it says, um, we... Uh, I uh, forgot the one rule I was looking for, but every word must have its bearing. So seeing as how they follow the lamb, let's look at why they follow the lamb. Um, so go to John 1, 29. It says, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, behold the who? Which does what? So why are they following the lamb? Because he promises to take away our sin. Amen. So this light comes here. The light is the lamb. And those who follow that light, Christ promises to take away their sin. He took away his sin. But David had to follow that light. David had to now walk humbly from that point forward. He had to walk humbly 
from that point onward, or his sin is going to come back up on his head. Amen? So the promise is, if you follow the Lamb, he takes away your sin. So we have to see that following the Lamb is following the light. We must record there's going to be many lambs. Many lambs are going to be here, but there's only one true lamb. Amen? And we have to follow that lamb. Jesus says, my sheep know my what? And they follow me. Amen? They don't walk in darkness. They follow him. So we have to recognize a voice. Well, how do we recognize a voice? Um, Ellen White tells us in Review and Herald, November 24th, 1895, um, she says, those who use Miller's rule are, are not strange. They're not strangers. I'm, I'm just par I'm paraphrasing that, that quote. If anyone find it, you can share it in the, in the group that we're in. Um, so the next day, they see Jesus. And they, uh, um, John sees Jesus, and he says, Behold the Lamb that takes away the sin. So the 144,000 had their sin taken away because they followed the Lamb. So let's go down to this next one, Matthew 18 now. Now this one is about Mary and the, you know, the, the Holy Spirit um, coming up, overshadowing Mary and putting the seed into her. This is about the combination of divinity and humanity. Um, I believe Rashad had gone over this some months ago. Um, in, in, in this scene, what is being illustrated to us is how God is going to unite the divine with the human. That's what's being illustrated to us. Mary is the what? It's the human, the church, right? And because Mary was living up to all the light she had, the Lord selected her above all women and gave her. So there was many women, but the Lord chose Mary. Amen? That's what he's illustrating to us. There's many churches, but the Lord's going to choose this one. This one has the light, and this one is going to bring forth that son at the end. Amen? Amen. All right. So she was a virgin and just connected to Revelation 14. This is this virgin. So this is what this is illustrating to us. So go down. It says, now the birth of Jesus Christ was, was on this wise. What, what at, I'm sorry. When as his mother Mary, when as his mother Mary was espoused to, to Joseph, before they were, t before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So this is of the who? It's of the Holy Ghost. It's a mirror. The Holy Ghost is going to implant this seed into our heart. He's going to reveal something to us. And this seed is going to go, and now just bring in the parable of the sower. Amen? And bring in the parable of the wheat and the tears. This is the same scene. Mary, Mary is this ground. She's the good ground that the seed went into, and it brought forth fruit. Amen? That's what Mary, Mary's illustrating. Mary's illustrating the earth that receives the seed that was implanted by the Holy Ghost. And this is how the divine is going to be combined with the human. Those who receive this, the angel came to Mary and she received that testimony. It's the same thing that's going to have here. The Lord wants us to understand that the spiritual realm is just as much as the natural realm. He's going to, he's going to commission angels to come with us with light. Just go to Millerite history, with, um, the midnight cry, Ellen White says God sent his angels and they, and they, and they impel people to raise and give that cry. Y'all remember that, those things? Mm -hmm. Amen. So going down, jump down with me to the bowl, to 21. And it says, and she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall what? Save his people from their sins. So this lamb, this Jesus, this light is going to save us from our sins. Amen. For amen. Our errors will be removed. There are things hindering us right now, and this promise is, I will remove these things. Only if you follow the Lamb. If you don't follow the Lamb, He's not going to do this work for you. Now, what do I mean? I want us to understand this. The Lord is going to send light. If we're not accustoming ourselves to learn how to follow the light as He opens it up, we're not going to be able to do it in this time. It's going to be 10 times as difficult to do it. Amen? I, I, it's going to be very difficult to follow the light in this time because Satan is, God is going to permit him to create confusion, to, 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 to divert us from following the light. But if we're, not, if, if we're allowing things to divert our minds from walking in the light now, then what are we going to do then? Amen? Our faith is going to be tested in following the light. That the Lord said, the Lord is going to send a powerful light enough to crowd out the, the and, we, and we have to remember last week, we got to be oblivious to what's happening around us. 
and follow that light, we're really going to be tried to the core. We cannot be lifted up until un, un, we cannot shine to the world unless we're tried. And Genesis 19 shows that very easily. Matthew 8, Genesis 19, Exodus 14. Um, the Lord is bringing these things together. And, we, and I, I believe that as we look into these things, the Lord will open up many things to our minds and what's, um, what's taking place. So go down now to the next one. It says, now all this was, was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the, of the Lord by the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin, shall, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, who? Who was standing with the 144,000? God. Behold, the Lamb of God. God was with the 144. It's the same scene. They were virgins, and the Lord sent, his, sent the seed into Mary, into this virgin. He's showing us how he's going to do this work. It's a light. It's a message that we must receive as um, and do this. Go to Colossians. It says, to whom God will make, make known what is the riches of the glory of his mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of what? Emmanuel, right? God with us. The, the whole world is going to know that at the end, that what? God is with us. Amen. And they're going to know God is with this one. Um, never have we heard a man, never have we heard a movement speak like this movement. Amen. That's, that's what people are going to hear as we, as we get. And it's only prefiguring the, the perfect end down there when we get down there. So going back to Colossians, um, it says, To whom God will make known, uh, I read that, sorry, go down to deliver. As I was talking about the deliverance now, is just like just like there's two births, two temple cleansing, there's there's two deliverance that we must have um, in order to be in order to be considered God's faithful people. So it says, Christ desires nothing so much as to as to what? Redeem his his heritage from the dominion of who? But before we are delivered from Satan's power without, we must be delivered from his power where? All right. So we have to be delivered from his power within before we deliver from his power without. Amen. And the only way, the only way to be delivered from his power within is the cross. That's it. Amen. That's the only way. The cross delivers us from his power without and within. If we don't go to the cross, we will not be delivered from his power without or within. We just won't be. No cross, no what? No cross, no lifting up. If we don't go to the cross, we cannot be lifted up. And, 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 and Satan prevented Christ, was trying to, Satan was trying to influence Christ from going to the cross. So he's going to try to influence us from going forward with this message. So let's continue with this. Um, it says, the Lord permits trials in order that we may be what? Cleansed from earthliness, from selfishness, from harsh, unchristlike traits of character. He suffers the deep waters of affliction to go over our souls in order that we may know him and Jesus Christ in whom in order that we may what? So we can't know him without the waters going over our souls. Amen. So what's going, what's going to happen at the 10? And, and where was the water? It was over them. Amen. The water was over their souls. But be, as long as they kept their eyes on that light, the waters was oblivious to them. It meant nothing to them. And the waters is affliction. She just told us is that. So God is going to permit Satan to bring a flood of affliction upon this movement. A flood of affliction is coming up on this movement. And it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough waters. But Jesus says, follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Right? Amen. We, we ha I, I just want us to get this. The Lord, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets to his servants, the who? The prophets. If the Lord is revealing this to us, this is something he's about to do. He's revealing these things to us. We're, we're about to have this. This, this waters try our souls in order for us to come out at the end as a glorious, um, this glorious church. 
Um, now, this is not to terrify anyone, but if we don't tell, if the Lord don't tell us what's coming, then that would just be evil, right? It would be an evil thing to see the sword coming and not tell someone to prepare for it. Amen? Uh, Swindon was going over that the sword is coming here, right, at the end. But the sword begins here. So where should we be receiving the warning? From back here. Amen? The Lord is warning us that this sword is coming. He's telling us this work. He's about to raise up. Someone is about to stand up there, and he's going to be a terror to many people. Amen. They're going to be a... Is a sword. They're going to be afraid of this power that stands up. But he's not a terror for those who do good. Amen. He's only a terror for the evildoers. But when we see this, it, it, the reason, reason why the Lord will be telling us is so that when we see this, we would rejoice. Not quiver, but rejoice. And lift up your heads for your redemption. What? It draws nigh. Lift up your head when you see this. Don't quiver. Go forward. Um, and, and Satan is going to, he's going to resist this work. So um, it's nice to notice because when this happens for us, um, Ezekiel says that they might know that there's a prophet in the church. Amen. Amen. When we see this come to pass, we, and I'm not talking outside of this movement, we will know, man, this indeed is the truth. Amen. Amen. And we're to walk in it as, we, as, as the Lord opens these things up to our mind. He says, he suffers the deep waters to of affliction to go over our souls in order that we may we may know him and Jesus Christ whom he has sent in in order that we may have deep heart longings longings to be cleansed from defilement and may come forth may come forth from the trial purer holier happier often often we enter the the furnace the furnace trial with our souls darkened with with selfishness but if patient under the crucial test, we shall come forth reflecting the divine character. When his purpose, listen to this part, when his purpose, when his what? When his purpose in the affliction is accomplished, it is done. Amen. When it is accomplished, then we come out. God's time is not our time. And but we can delay the time or we can speed up the time. Amen. Amen. It's all about submitting or resisting. We can we can do which one. We can go which way we want to go. We can resist or we can submit. If you resist, longer fire. If you submit, shorter fire. Amen. Amen. That's what he said to, to um, Zedekiah. You can get the wooden yoke or you can get the iron yoke. The, the iron yoke longer because you're resisting. Or you can do the wooden yoke. It's easy. Take my yoke. Christ's yoke was what? It was the wood. Amen. Who's getting the iron? Satan. No mercy there. Amen. So um, going even the wooden is just as bad. But you want the wooden yoke. Don't take that iron one. But going on, he says, he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. Go on, now go down. So as I said, this is the beginning and this is the end. So we're saved from right back here. As soon as the light come, if you received it, you're what? But what does the Bible say? Let's go to Matthew 24. But he that shall what? Endure unto the end, the same shall be what? Saved. You got to go to the end. Amen. And, and I'm going to go to Exodus um, where it says that you're passing under the rod. Right. Um, when Moses stretched forth his rod in the beginning and then at the end, what did God tell him to do? Stretch it out again. Right. And Israel passed under this rod and the rod is the rod of correction. So when we get into this time, what is the Lord doing to us? Correcting, Correcting us. us. Because Jesus says, how be it when he, the Holy Spirit, has come, he will convince you of what? There you go. Sin, righteousness, and judgment. So when the Holy Spirit overshadows us, he's reproving us of sin, of righteousness. And this is the Holy Spirit is that rod. He's correcting us. Jesus is going to stretch out that rod. He's going to send the Holy Spirit. And when he comes... What is he going to do? He's going to correct us. Amen. Amen. He's, the Holy Spirit is going to correct us. He's going to correct certain things. He's going to correct certain things we were teaching. He's going to correct certain um, things that I, I, I probably put out there that was just erroneous. And he's going to correct it. But I have to receive this correction. Amen. It, it applies to me too. It applies to all of us. Right now we're all probably saying things we shouldn't be uttering. But the Lord is going to, but if we receive this correction, but here's the sad thing. The swines 
who don't want to receive correction is going to feed up on the mistakes we've been putting out there. You follow? All those mistakes we've been saying, just go back to, the, just go back to here. I thought Trump was going to be the last president. Mistake, right? But what did the swines do? They fed up on that mistake, and they kept that before the people. And saying, look, they taught this false prophets, false prophets, false prophets. So the Lord is going to bring us to this place where he's going to reveal certain things, but the swines is going to feed up on those mistakes instead of feeding up on what's, what's there to nourish us, which is the light that the Lord sends. So it says, there is no danger that the Lord will neglect the prayers of his people. The danger is that in temptation and trial, they will become discouraged and fail to persevere in prayer prayer. The danger is not in Christ, it's in us. Amen. We have to persevere during this time. And, but the promise is, he that begun a good work in us will perform it to the end. So the Lord begins it, and the promise is, he'll perform it to the end. But we got to go forward. No matter what, we have to go forward. Um, let's turn to Daniel now. I want to use this to illustrate this one point. And it says, and at that time, keep that phrase in mind. It's, this, I think this is probably one of the, the most important phrases. This time is a time that nobody will miss. It don't matter who you are. You, no one won't miss this. The only difference is one class will know what this time means. Another class won't understand what this time means. Right? This is the shut door. So when this happened, a door is shut. One class knows that. One class doesn't. And that's just how it's going to go. One class is going to go forward not knowing that their probation is, is passed. That's, that's scary. That's, that's very, you're going to go do something not knowing the Lord bypassed. He left you a long time ago. And when do you find out? When you get to the end. And, and, and now, now you want the Lord, but he, um, he says, I, depart from me. I never knew you. And it says, and at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, now, this is why I said no one will miss this. Just keep this part in mind. There's, there's some nice thoughts when you look at them. It says, and there shall be a what? A time of what? So when Michael stands up, there is a time of trouble. Ecclesiastes chapter, chapter 3, right? It's not a trouble that comes today and gone tomorrow. It's a time of trouble when he stands up. And now listen to the next verse. Such as never was. You've never seen this kind of trouble. Y'all follow? No one has ever seen this kind of trouble. So when we get to this 10, no one has ever seen this kind of trouble. What is the Lord doing then? We, and how, how does he teach a new thing? Parables. This thing that no one has ever seen is a parable. But, though, but the wise who have the spirit of the holy gods will what? Understand. Will understand what's happening. We'll see these things happening and we'll be able to interpret it little at a time, little at a time, little at a time till we get to the end. Amen? But none of the wicked will be able to understand why Trump did this, why Biden did that, why the governor did this, why the mayor did that, why Turkey did this, why India did that, why China did this, why Russia did that. They won't understand that. It's, this is a divine working. This is not human anymore. It's divine. And only the wise will understand these different movements that Christ is going to permit Satan to do. It's, it's gonna, we're going to see some really wonderful things, but some fearful things at the same time. It's sweet and bitter at the same time. Um, and, and all of those things that are going to happen is only for this movement. Genesis 19, 19 sorry, says it. it it only happens to surround this house because Satan was trying to move Lot away from the angels. That's why those men went to his house. So the trouble comes to move us away from the truth. So, as I said, Swinney was going over trouble and trouble. Trouble, trouble is going to come. Michael's going to stand up and Michael is going to stand up. And we're, we're going to see that as we go on. So it says... Um, a time of trouble such as never was since, since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be what? And what? We must be delivered from his power. How? So what did he send? Light. At that time when he stands up, what does he send? Light. But he only de delivers who? His people. He only delivers those that are walking in the light. 
That's that's what that's what the Bible says. He says he's going to send light in the real close of probation when probation closes for everyone and Michael stands up. What does he send on 144? Light. He has to send them light because we just read that it's in the darkness and trial that we know God. So the Lord is going to send them light that's going to lead them to know him. So the Lord is going to send us a light that's going to lead us to know him. And if we walk in that light, we shall know. We, we will understand if we keep pace with that light. That's what he was doing in, um, at the Red Sea. Amen. God is known by his judgments. That's how the Lord is known. So going down, it says, so a time of trouble is the time of deliverance. That's what I have in here. So now let's look at how Michael stands up throughout the scripture. Let's, let's look at it. And let's, one of the places easily seen is Exodus 14. Because who's, the, who's there? Pharaoh, right? And who has to be there? Michael. Revelation 12 gives us the rule. Michael and his angel first, Satan and his angels, right? So at the Red Sea, it was Michael and Satan. They were fighting. It was Michael and his angels, Israel, and Satan and his angels, Pharaoh and his army. It's the same scene. Same, and, it, and what was it for Israel? A time of trouble. Amen. It was a time of trouble such as never was at the Red Sea. Israel has never seen anything like this. No one has ever seen anything like this. Y'all follow? It's the same scene. So um, let's go to Exodus 14 now. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still, and see the what? Salvation. What salvation means delivered. See the deliverance of the Lord. Amen. And it means save. And when you look it up, one thing that really stuck out to me when you look up this word, it means help. This is the healing of the Lord. Healing begins right here. A lot of healing begins right here. Natural and spiritual healing begins right here. And if we endure on to the end, we'll be saved. Amen? These things we have to remember. We have to treasure these things as the Lord shows it to us. And it says, um, salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you when? Today. What comes to mind? Today, if you hear his what? Voice. That's what I want us to see. So it says, Moses says, stand still and see the salvation which he will show you today. And Hebrew says, today, if you hear his voice. And we know that John and then who? Christ. So we must hear this voice. There's a voice in the beginning. Lift up thy voice like a what? Trumpet and show my people their sins. Correction. Correct my people. That's why God is showing us these things. To correct us. And if we continue in this correction, we shall be saved. And we will hear his voice at the end. So we get this voice in the beginning and this voice in the end. And if we, if we follow that voice on to the end, we will be saved. Know my voice. And, but the Lord says there's going to be many voices. Many voices are going to rise here. And many voices at the end. But, amen, but Christ's voice is going to be heard above all those voices. Amen? Uh, that's, um, it's, it's, we're going to see some very interesting things, as I, as I keep saying. So let's go back to Exodus now. Um, jump down to verse 14. It says, The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. I love this be silent what it, that's us be still and what is God doing for us in the heart he's fighting for us how's he fighting for us driving out wrong thoughts he's this is a battle in the heart he's he, there's thoughts right now we wrestle with if we continue what is the Lord gonna do drive them out they're gone amen and the Lord is also teaching us how to deal with with worldly minded people what does this say? Egyptian is a symbol of worldliness. It's earthliness, right? How does the Lord say to deal with them? I will fight for you. Don't, don't raise yourself up against these people. Let me deal with them. You just go forward walking in the light. Amen? So when, when earthly people and worldly mindly people comes and challenge us, God says just keep walking in the light. Don't pay them any mind. You follow? Each, each, each nation has given us an example. Egypt was earthly-minded people, atheistic-minded people, spiritualistic-thinking people. 
Babylon represents people who love confusion. They, they, they love to drink confusion. They, they don't like order. They like chaos. That's Babylon. Amen? When you go to Jericho, Jericho love walls. They trust in their walls. They trust in themselves. That's that group of people. When you go to Sodom, they love licentiousness. This class of people, this is what they love. So each one, the Lord is teaching us how to deal with each class that manifests that particular spirit. Amen? Amen. And when we bring these things together, we will know how to witness to the type of people that come before us. By, uh, by recognizing what spirit they have, we just quickly go to the Bible. Ah, he's a sodomite. So how do I deal with sodomite? I pour oil on that flame. I tell them don't do wickedly, but they're not going to like it. How do I deal with the Egyptians? Don't listen to them. Don't pay them no mind. Don't pay them no attention. How do I deal with, with um, Babylonian people who love confusion? Many, many tekel, you farsim. The Lord has numbered thy days. Give them a fearful warning. Amen? The Lord is teaching us how to witness to the different classes of people. And when we take these, these are very deep things and nice things. But um, going down, it says, The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel, that they what? Go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And, 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 and I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they, shall f and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, and upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon the horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between, now this part, Swinton said this morning he was teaching that the message is now has to be a much more direct appeal, right? The Lord is only is doing this direct appeal in measure. But as we get close to this scene, it's going to be, it's just going to come at us. Every time we open up our Bible from this point on, as I, as I was saying, to study, it's going to be a direct appeal. The Lord is going to, he's going to rebuke us. Every time we open up that Bible to go forward, he's going to rebuke us. Amen. We're going to see things and he's going to, and remember, he's going to, in, in order for the Holy Spirit to come and fill the temple, we must be convicted of sin. He must cleanse the temple. The work of Christ was to prepare the temple for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And the way he does this is he cleanses it. The only way to cleanse it is to show people their sin and to, and to teach them the way of righteousness and give them time to correct these things so that the Holy Spirit can come and fill that house that Christ has just cleansed. Amen. So the Lord is going to bring us under this rod. So Moses is stretching out his rod. He's correcting Israel's unbelief. They had an evil heart of unbelief, and the Lord is driving out that unbelief. But they have to go forward. But Pharaoh held on to that unbelief. So Pharaoh is representing someone that comes to this point that holds on to the unbelief even though they saw the manifestation of power. The Lord manifests power here and he manifests power here. Amen? But Pharaoh in this movement is going to see this manifestation of power, is going to see prophecy fulfilled right here, and they're still going to hold on to their unbelief and refuse to repent. This movement. Not outside. This movement. The Lord is going to show us. He's, prophecy is going to be fulfilled according to what we are saying. That's what, we, that's what the Lord wants. To, we're teaching this, right? So we should expect to see it. We should expect to see what we're teaching. And Jesus says, when it has come to pass, that you might what? But if you hold on to your unbelief, you're now a swine. Yet they enter not in because of what? unbelief so Pharaoh is rep uh, we're gonna see closely that it represents us and this is why I, I'm making this point now I'll read the next one with me and I'm gonna see if anyone is 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 following along um, um, where did I stop it's verse 20 right and it says and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel and it was a cloud and darkness to who to the unbelievers but it gave light by night 
to these. Early writings 54, right? The light came, but it was darkness to those that was of the world in the camp. But it was light to the little praying company. Amen? So what should we be doing right now based on what I just said? Little praying. Right? We should be praying, Lord, help me not to refuse this manifestation of your power. Help me not to do it. How do we do it? Then or now? Now. Amen? But here, here's why it's fearful for me and it should be fearful for all of us. Let's look at the next line. Read us in this. We are this people. Amen? Put us in this story. We're not in the time of Exodus. We're in the time of Exodus in 2021. That's where we are. So 2020 Exodus is now. But the Bible says um, God requires that which, is, that which hath been is what? Now. So this is now. So whenever we read our Bible, this is what's going to happen to us here. We're going to see now. Every time we read, we're going to see now. And if we don't like to see now, we're going to crucify that Bible. We're going to shut it up. And you know what God's going to do? Go to that man that wants to shut up the Bible. And, and, and when we go, y'all going to try to shut us up. Amen? That's what's going to happen. These are, the Lord wants us to see this. The, the swines is going to come after us to shut us up. Pharaoh was trying to shut them up. From giving that light, from going forward. So let's look at this. Yes, he was shut up. The Lord was rebuking him. Amen. So going on now. So now let's look at this next one. But it gave light by night to these, so that so that the one came not near the other all that night. What do y'all get from that? Whoever is an unbeliever. We're going to begin to separate from each other. It's a division. We're not going to want to come near each other from that point forward. Y'all follow? I, the reason why I fear that right now we may all be friends, but if any one of us is holding on to any doubt to this message, once we reach this point, we're going to begin to diverge. We're going to go two separate directions. Your only one group is going to see darkness, all they're going to see is darkness, while one group, by beholding, you become what? Change. So you're going to become darkness. One group is going to see light, and by beholding, they become what? Change. And what does the Bible say about light and darkness? They cannot agree. That's all I'm doing. I'm, not I'm just bringing it there. Israel and Egypt can't agree. Amen. It's just a symbol teaching us. That once we get here, if we have unbelief and we refuse to let it go when the Lord manifests himself right here in front of our eyes, unbelief sets in. And then we're going to oppose each other. We're just going to oppose each other. That's all we're going to do from that, from that point on. I'm just reading what the Bible says. This, this is now as we go on. And it says, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back. By a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea up on the dry ground. Um, so we went over this. So jump down with me to 24. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the, the Lord looked onto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of the fire and of the cloud and what? Why weren't they troubled in the beginning? Why weren't they troubled in the beginning? They hardened their heart. But now what happens to them to the end? They're troubled. But who has peace? Israel. The little praying company. A amen? So trouble in the beginning, trouble in the end. Amen. The evil spirit is going to trouble them. The Lord troubled Pharaoh. They come down to this end. They, remember, God says, I'm going to harden their heart. So that they're going to follow and they, they're going to follow. But this trouble comes upon them at the end and they shall not escape. Pharaoh didn't escape. So he's illustrating people who's going to come there and the cares of this world is going to crush them. It's going to choke us. So the God is, remember, it's a terror to those that do evil. It's not a terror to those that do good. So the judgment that comes here is not a 9-11 wasn't a terror for those who did good. It was a terror for those who did evil. So when this happened, it's not a terror for, 
for evil is a terror for good. Um, the, Lord, the Lord is delivering us. It says, trouble the host um, of the Egyptians. And, took off, and jump down with me now to, to verse 25. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea. Nice thoughts if you connect the stretch forth in the hand. God's hand is not short that it cannot save. So the time of destructive um, judgment is a time of mercy. So it's nice when you bring it down to the close of probation. The time of destructive judgment is um, up on the world is a time of mercy for the 144,000. There's a light that the 144,000 didn't see. And now it's a time of mercy for them who did not know what is truth. And now the Lord reveals something to them, that, but to the world, it's darkness. They cannot understand this light. But for the 144, mercy. And they get to go forward in, in this work of Christ, saving them from their sins. They get to go forward in having their earthliness removed so that they can stand before God when he comes at the end before Christ. So going down, it says, so I just wanted to put that in. Moses stretched forth his rod in the beginning. Moses stretched forth his rod in the end. And we, we have to pass under this rod from beginning to end. And to pass under the rod, the Lord is correcting us. So um, now go with that to, to, to the sea. Go with me to Micah. It says, feed thy people with thy what? So what was Moses doing? He was feeding them. Moses was feeding Israel, but it was a terror to who? To Egypt. It was a terror to them, but Moses was feeding Israel because God led his people like a flock through the, through the Red Sea and into the wilderness. So it says, feed thy people with thy rod, the flock of thine heritage, which dwell solitarily in the wood, in the midst of Carmel, let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of when? Old. According to, so the Lord is going to feed us according to the days of 1989. Amen? Amen. He's going to show us a flood of light from 1989, right, and it's going to begin right here. He's, amen. He's, amen. That he's going back to 89. I mean, I'm not, not neglecting all the other histories, but the most one that's important to us is 1989 onward. They're all connected, but night, he's going to open up things to us from that time, and we're going to speak forth the truth very plainly from that point forward. It says, according to the days of thy coming out of when? The land of Egypt, will I show unto him what? Marvelous. What is the Lord going to show us here? Marvelous things. Amen. He's going to show us marvelous things. So it says, the, the nation shall see and be confounded. At all their might, they shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their mouth is what? Stopped. He sent his angel to do what to the lions? Shut their mouth. They're going to be confounded when this, the world is going to be confounded in this time. It says, um, the nation shall see and be confounded at all their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ear shall be deaf. They shall... They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of, move out of their, their, their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of, because of thee. Who, who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth what? Iniquity. Why did he? Because they follow the Lamb. Um, pardoneth iniquity and, and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He retaineth not his anger forever, because he delighteth in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities, and thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the what? What did he do to Pharaoh? That was their sin. He just cast their sin into the depths of the sea. That's what the parable the Lord was teaching Israel that day. He was feeding them. Everything that the Lord did that day, he was feeding Israel. How does the Lord feed? Spiritual things. They were looking outwardly at the natural of what God did, but God was speaking to them spiritually. From the day they were leaving Egypt, God was speaking to them spiritually. Amen? So the, as we are seeing things happen, we should be understanding these things spiritually. We sh it's not about that Biden become president. There's something spiritual taking place. Um, when, when that happened. 
And God's people is going to be able to discern these things. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Um, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy what? Rod. Thy rod and thy staff. They what? Comforter. So the rod is the comforter. Amen. So when Moses stretched forth his rod, what was he doing to Israel? Comforted, but it was a terror to who? The to the Egyptians. Because they saw cloud and darkness. So when Moses does this work, when this happened, one group is going to be comforted, comforted by the Holy Spirit, and another group is going to be terror. A comfort. Amen. Amen. So when we get in here, we're going to comfort each other with the resurrection. We're going to rise again. Amen. Go through this affliction. Let the waters go over your soul. Amen. And I love what Christ, Christ connected Jonah to, to, his, to his burial, right? The waters went over Jonah's soul. So Christ is saying the grave is the water going over your soul. Amen. It went over Christ's soul, but he, Christ was comforted with the resurrection. He says, in three days, I will rise again. Amen. Destroy this temple, and in three days, I will rise. He was comforted by those words. So our comfort is that God says, if you endure to the end, you shall be saved. Amen. Comfort yourself with these words. Remember these things. Remember this promise. Don't let Satan drown out or rob you of that, that comfort. Um, so now we're coming to a close. It says, there are periods which are turning points in the history of the nations and of the, and of the church. In the providence of God, when these different crises arrive, the light for that what? And at that time, what happens? So the light for that time is given. Amen? And if it is received, let's see what she says. It um, is given. If it is received, there is spiritual progress. If it is rejected, spiritual declension and shipwreck what? Follow. So I, I don't want to submit this. This is going to be a turning point for the church and the nation. Right here, this turning point. And the light for this time will be given. And if it is received, our sins will be taken away. If it is rejected, we will die in our sins. Amen? That's the blessing that's going to be there for us. Because the Bible, and keep this in mind, it says, and at that time when Michael stands up for the 144,000, they'll know that light was given there. But the wicked won't understand that light. They will not understand that light. Only the wise will understand. We're going to say to our brethren, brethren, do not so wickedly. You're fighting against God. But, there, but our words is only going to be like oil on the flames. They're going to resist our words. But praise God, Matthew 8 is showing us that one group is going to accept our words. One group is going to, because that's what this says. If it is received, progress, rejected, declension. And the Lord sends light by sending a messenger. That's how he sends light. Um, it says, the question, what is truth, shall be asked with, with decided interest. We must respond to the command of, of God and what? So that story in Exodus is teaching us about truth. Every truth. Exodus 14 is an illustration of every truth that comes to us. We go forward with it. Or we reject it. That's all that's teaching us. It's, it, it, the God's word is just nice. It's used to illustrate many things. Amen. Because to accept a truth is the cross. Every truth that Christ sends us is a cross. For some of us, it's easy to bear that cross. But when it's, when it's a direct cross, it's a little bit harder. Some of us, it's easy to give up meat eating, right? But it's really a cross. We picked up a cross to give up meat eating. Um, some of us, it's easy to get rid of the jewelry and the earring. It's a cross. But for some people, it's, it's not so easy. But it's a cross nonetheless. So they can accept the light or they can reject the light. They, they accept blessing, ex reject cursing comes. So going on, it says, go forward from light to a what? Greater light. There is no such thing. Keep this. There is no such thing as the soldiers of Christ standing still careless and inactive so what does it mean to be careless and indifferent so early writers 54 the one who was careless and indifferent what were they doing 
they weren't going forward with the light. Amen. It's not that they didn't see that it was light. They just didn't go forward. Amen. They weren't. So right here, if we're some of us, if we're careless and indifferent, and my plea is we got us, we got to know what it means to be careless and indifferent. It's not studying our Bible, not studying what the Lord is opening up. That's that's a careless thing to do. It's very careless. The Lord is here telling us that this is about to happen, but we're, we're careless and indifferent about it. Amen. And when it comes, now we want to be careful. But it's too what? It's too late to be careful. You can't build an ark when the flood is here. The ark must be built before the flood. Amen. That's what that is teaching us. It's too late to build an ark now. You don't have time. If you had the time, praise the Lord. So now that everyone who comes here, this is why this is beautiful. This is nice, right? For one group who comes here, door shut. Amen. But you shut that door. You, you close it by refusing the light. It's not the Lord as the Lord is going to shut it down here. But when he's um, lot went out and he did what with the door? He closed it. It wasn't the divine close. That's what I want to point out. Amen. It's, it's a shut door message, but it's all based upon how you receive it. And once you reject it, divine close. Amen. So we this this is a shut door message. We refuse it. Door closes. God shuts it upon you. This is what. Amen. Divinity. Yes. Divine shut. Human shut. So going out now to the, to the ark. So Noah built an ark, right? Everybody else who neglected to do the work Noah did. What don't they have? They don't have an ark. But when the Lord sends the light, some animals see that and they reject their work and get on Noah's work. Amen. So some repent. Some, the brute beast stayed out. The brute beast repent and came in. Amen. So it's two groups. One is going to come on this ark and another group is going to refuse to come on the ark. And they're going to perish and one is going to be saved. Amen. That's what that's what the animals are going to get on in this time. There are people who are going to receive, that are going to allow our message to influence their mind. Once our message has influenced their mind, they have gotten on the ark. And that's what that means. Yes. Amen. So some are going to be influenced by what we say and some are going to go against our influence. How much time do I have left? Three minutes. OK, going down. It says, careless, there there are constant improvements to be made. The providence of God is leading us on step by step in the path of obedience. Um, jump down with me to the, the next one. The work of sanctification is the work of a lifetime. It, it must go on continually, but this work cannot go on in the heart while the light on any part of the truth is rejected or neglected. The sanctified soul will not Will, the sanctified soul will not be content to remain in ignorance, but will desire to walk in the light and to seek for what? So that, that's our part. Amen. We got to walk in that light and seek for greater light. And it says, as a miner digs for gold and silver, so the follower of Christ, Revelation 14, so the follower of Christ will seek for truth as for hidden treasures and will press from light to a to a greater light ever increasing in knowledge all right jump down with me to the next one jesus desires to efface the image of the earthly from from the minds of his followers and to impress upon them the image of the what from the natural to the what to the spiritual so it says that they may become one with himself reflecting his character and showing Forth the praises of him who have called them out of darkness into his marvelous light. And I want to read this last quote um, upon this point. I think I missed one. Yeah, I did miss one. Um, it's one with him breathing. But you can read that one on your own um, on, on when you have the time. This last quote, now it says, jump down to the bowl. It says, 
The enemy has men in our what? Through whom he works. Where is this easily illustrated? Where is this easily illustrated? The twelve. Who was the who was who was the man in the rank? And what was he? An Egyptian. Amen. He was a devil. He was an un he never believed from the beginning. And he's in the rank. So that story is illustrating to, to us to make it more direct. This is how Satan uses us. The Lord is there teaching us and we're careless and indifferent to the light in which he's teaching. We're not paying attention to it. Yes, we're sitting there in the rank. But Satan is there communicating to us. That fallen angel is there talking to us while the message is going forth. And it's distracting us from what Christ is trying to show. That's, this is real. It's real. So right now as we're sitting here, there are angels in our rank communicating to us. Either a holy angel or it's an evil angel communicating to us. How are they communicating to us? By the words that's coming out of the person up here speaking. Is either we're being influenced for right or we're being influenced for wrong. Y'all follow? It's, it, every time someone, whether it be Swinton, whoever, Michelle, anyone who comes up here and speaks, we're being influenced. And there are angels there speaking to us. Which one are we listening to? Which one are we following? So, And now this is why this is important. Here's what she has to say to this. It says, The enemy has men in our ranks through whom he works, that the light which God has permitted to shine upon the heart and illuminate the chambers of the mind may be darkened. There are persons who have received the precious light of the righteousness of Christ, but they do not act upon it. They do not what? Act upon it. They are who? Foolish virgins. They prefer the sophistry of who? So when Judas was sitting there, he was preferring the sophistry of who? Satan. So what is it? This is us. Right now, the Lord is teaching us who are we preferring? Are we listening to Christ? Or are we listening to Satan? This is, this is right now. And this is going to be manifested right here. This spirit, whichever spirit we're entertaining, is going to be manifested right here in this time. We, and this is the, if we see the sword coming, what are we to do? Sound the trumpet. The sword is coming. The light is coming. And when this light come, it's going to be a blessing for one. It's going to be a curse for another group. The Lord is going to either soften some of our hearts or, or he's going to harden our hearts. The same light that comes does those, both, those, those two things, softens and hardens. And it's all based upon how we're preparing the ground now to have the seed planted in. Because Satan is going to sow tears and Christ is going to sow his good seed. Amen. The whole parable gets fulfilled all in here, all over again, down to the end, all of it. But it's all based upon how the ground is being plowed right now. How are we working the ground? Are we going to God's word and walking in this light and this truth so he can soften our hearts and make us make us comforting and caring and interested people in the fulfillment of prophecy? Or are we neglecting and are careless hearing these things, but thinking about all these other things, no money, no this, no that, no this, no that, and allowing it to drown out the message that God is teaching us? Because if we're thinking on those things, this is the cares of this life that's going to choke us because now Satan is going to make you think about it more. Amen? He's going, to call, he's going to shake the world like the world has never been shaken before. And if those things are bothering you now, you're going to drown in this time. Because God is going to give him permission to flood this world with water. Overwhelm this world. The whole world is about to be overwhelmed. But praise God, there's supposed to be a group of people who are not overwhelmed, who will walk on water, meaning walking by faith. And not by sight and not allowing all of those things to drown out the truth that's in their hearts. Amen. The Lord is about to overwhelm this world very soon and we have to be prepared for it. Closing out this next one it says they prefer the sophistry of the enemy rather than the rather than the plain thus saith the Lord. When the blessing of God rested upon them in 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 order that they might become ch um, channels of light they did not what? Go forward from light to a greater light. They permitted what? Doubt and unbelief to what? Satan entered in. Amen. 
Doubt and unbelief is Satan. That's how he enters in. So if you're hearing God's voice from Swindon, whomever is speaking, and we don't walk in that light, and we allow doubt and unbelief about what's being said, who's coming in? Satan, because whose sophistry is it? His. The Bible plainly says, lean not to your own what? Understanding. It doesn't matter what we think, we're not to lean to it. We're to go where? To the Word of God. Flee to the Word of God and see if whether those things you're understanding is so. That's what it, that, the Bible says, don't lean to your evil heart. Even if it's good or bad, take it to the Word of God. Test, test that. Let the Word of God determine if that thought that you're receiving is His or not. And if it is so, walk in it. Amen? And if it is not, let it go. It's unbelief. It's only going to lead you to unbelief. So close out with that. It said, which they had seen became, um, became an uncertainty to them. God forbid this is any of us. That we come here and the message becomes an uncertainty to us. Because we saw it in 2014. We saw it in 2016. We saw it with the scapegoat. We saw it at 9-11 with the conference. The, 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 all these things is now uncertain to all those people that left. They no longer have a sure foundation. But praise the Lord, the storm is coming that, that if, if by the grace of God they may repent and find themselves on a firm platform once again. But for us, the sword is coming. And, and we have to make sure the ground is ready. And let us cease from being careless and indifferent, meaning the truth that the Lord is opening up. Don't be indifferent to it. And don't lean to your understanding by saying this is too difficult for me to understand. That's garbage. Because the Bible says it's not by might, nor by strength, but how? By my spirit. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't try to approach my Bible saying I can't understand something. That's garbage. Because the Bible says, behold, if any man lack wisdom, let him do what? That's the promise. So cling to that. Eat that. Don't feed on the mistake of I can't understand. It's too difficult. Feed on the promise that says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And feed on that. And go to your Bible and let the, Lord, let the Lord open up his light to you. He can do that. In fact, he wants to do it. So claim that promise and, and don't, don't be discouraged by all of these things and what's being said. That's garbage. And be encouraged by the word of the Lord. Go forward. Amen. Had no lack. Just get, we, can, we, can, we can all understand this. We can all stand here and teach this thing because Moses says, what to God that all of his people were teachers. The Bible says, they that be wise shall be teachers. Amen. So if we're going to be wise, we have to be teachers and we can all be teachers. Is simply going to the word of God and asking him to make us wise so that we can understand these things that, that, that are being taught. Practice it now so that when this light comes, it won't be so difficult. It won't be difficult for, for, for us to do it because we've been, we've been plowing the ground to having the Lord help us to understand certain things. Let us close out with the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you for this Sabbath day, O oh Lord, and we want to thank you for the promises in which you have given to us that we can understand these things, O oh Lord, for you said if any, if any of us lack wisdom that we're to ask of you, and you will give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, but you, you also said let us ask in faith nothing wavering, um, for he that wavereth is like the troubled sea. And Lord, you're about to trouble the sea, and the sea is troubled because of a lot of wavering. So Lord, please, Lord, help us to be settled upon these things in which we're understanding. And the way to be settled, O oh Lord, is to come to you and ask you to teach us so that we can have more evidence piled upon evidence so that we can stand firmly upon a dust say of the Lord. So help us to go from, from light to greater light. Um, and, and we ask that you please forgive us of our sins. And if if there's anyone that's not understanding, O oh Lord, we pray that you would encourage them and that you, you would motivate them and help them to see that, that we, they, they can understand this. So please be with us. Help us to continue to keep this day holy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.